Psalm 104. The Lord is clothed with honor and majesty. He maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flaming fire. His providences provide for all forms of life. His glory endures forever. Sounds like it might be another psalm about the last days, but there is also another Joseph Smith translation in this psalm, which I will talk about after I read it. So here we go. Bless the, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run, along, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, an herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for, as for the stork, the fir, tre uh, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the, for of the forest do, uh, do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them, the <coughs> that thou givest them they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills, and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. Now that is a great song. Look at the detail. He talks first about the flood and how God caused the water to even cover the mountains, but then he made it come back. He's describing basically how gravity works to pull water into the valley so that it can't flood everything. He's describing the minutia and detail of nature and how so evenly it works so that every animal has its own place. That all of the planning 
All of the creation of God is so carefully put together that everything is perfectly cared for in nature. It is a magnificent poem and a magnificent exp explanation of God's creative work. And I love that he ends the, the great sea, talking about the Mediterranean, how there are so much life in the sea that we don't even know. And then he talks about Leviathan again, which is also mentioned in uh, Job, if you'll recall that. Leviathan plays therein. I like that. But it is a great description, not only of nature, but how God not only created nature, but holds it together, keeps it working in its perfect form. But as I mentioned at the beginning, there is this Joseph Smith translation. And what this suggests again, Joseph Smith translation is an inspired translation or correction of the Bible done by Joseph Smith to restore or correct those passages that had been lost or altered over the years. And this is one, this is talking about the Leviathan in the Great Sea. Verse, verse 26, as rendered in the, Joseph, in the uh, King James, says, There go the ships, there is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. Joseph Smith translation, There go the ships, and thou hast made Leviathan to play therein. Again, talking about the sea, he's not talking about Leviathan playing in the ships, but he's talking about how the very physics of ships sailing on the sea, as well as the great creatures of the sea playing in the waters. All of this was done by God. He not only created the animals, he didn't just create life, he put together the exactness of existence gravity and how it works how it is not too strong and not too weak that is god fine-tuning things the buoyancy of ships allowing them to float and the winds that push them along allowing them to sail all of this is done according to god's creation and his intelligence and his design it is a beautiful hymn beautiful song 